as I had been making it a, a point to do my first job out of college as a, working for a consulting company out of Boston, I took my lunch break to walk down the main street of a mill town. In this case, it was Penobscot Avenue in downtown Millinocket as I visited Great Northern Paper. I stopped for lunch at the downtown restaurant, and the actual name of the restaurant was the downtown restaurant, <laughs> and decided to check out a couple of stores. You know, maybe it was growing up in Lewis and Auburn, my third floor apartment on the hill in New Auburn overlooking the Great Falls and the mills of Lewiston, or maybe it was my chemical engineering studies at Orono and my internship spent in the eastern and northern Maine paper mills, but I love mill towns. Gritty mill towns filled with salt-of-the-earth people. So I'm on this walk down Penobscot Avenue and I stop into a gallery. And I approach the woman in the gallery, as many of us would, and say, hello, how are you? Her response wasn't what I expected. Her voice cracked. She said, I don't know what's going to happen to my community. You see, this wasn't your, your average January afternoon in the Katahdin region. The week before, Great Northern Paper had announced his bankruptcy. What was a 22-year-old to say in that moment? In reality, there was nothing I could say or I could do. But that moment on a January afternoon in 2003 would stick with me. Fast forward six years. I'm engaging on the ground in Jay and Livermore Falls as the executive director of the Androscoggin Land Trust. Yes, a chemical engineer, pulp and paper grad, can become a tree-hugging environmentalist. <laughs> well, but we'll, we'll save that story for another talk. My sales pitch was the standard land trust sales pitch. Conserve natural resources. Protect wildlife habitat. Build hiking and biking trails. And then, boom. The Otis Mill in Chisholm Village is announced for closure. Hundreds will lose their jobs, major tax base gone. Now what? Here I was, pr proposing to keep land from development in a community that had just lost its major anchor. Oh. Didn't I have egg on my face? <laughs> or on the tarp. You know, I stepped back from that moment and thought, what if I had caught the egg? Was there something I could have done differently? You know, how many of you in elementary school played the catch the egg game, toss the egg game? That's a pretty, pretty standard, right? Someone tosses you an egg. Oh, I caught it. Someone tosses you an egg, and usually after a few failed attempts of it breaking on you or on you or on the person next to you, you catch it. And how do you catch it? You're watching its trajectory, you're gauging it, you cradle it, and you stop its motion. You know, maybe it was my chemical engineering and process engineering studies at UMaine, but I picture communities and their development as that egg in flight, with forces moving them in one direction or another, waiting to be influenced. Now, for Jay and Livermore Falls, they were broken eggs. But how could the community not see that this was coming? You had a 100-year-old factory with the equipment as old as the 1900 vintage mill building itself. But then I was able to look at myself, and unlike when I was on Penobscot Avenue some 10 years earlier, there was something I actually could do. I was engaged and invested in this community. But what had I been doing? What had I been doing wrong? You know, I believed then and do now that conserving natural resources and Connecting people to the outdoors to be physically active is part of a 21st century economic development strategy. But when your major economic anchor is a large manufacturing plant and has been for more than three generations, that wonky stuff is just not going to be on your radar screen. So what did I do differently? Well, it was still all about getting people outdoors, but now it was about how are people in Jay and Livermore Falls getting outdoors? It's on an ATV. It's on a snowmobile. It's in a tree stand hunting or it's even on a skidder at a logging operation. Connecting people to the outdoors in Jay and Livermore Falls had to be different because they were different, and they deserved to be met and engaged where they were. Now, <clears throat> now land conservation wasn't going to be it. You, know, you needed to have the small businesses at the table. 
And that community was blessed with a very active volunteer chamber that realized they needed to lend a hand. Place was going to be important, and Jay and Livermore Falls had an active downtown group committed to bring people to the downtown and the riverfront for events and to build community. And you had to have investors. And in the case of Jay and Livermore Falls, there were a couple of crazy residents who had this great idea that they'll just buy a paper mill and figure out how to reinvent it. So what did it look like to catch that egg? Well, after a few years, what was a century-old barbed wire and chain-link barrier between a community and its historic riverfront was now a mill under renovation, with a new restaurant open for paddlers and anglers in the summer to go have lunch and a drink. The downtown was seeing new buildings built and old buildings getting new life, all connected by four miles of new downtown and riverfront trails. Now, the egg hasn't fully been caught in that community, but what was happening now is that people were coming together and lending their hands because they believed in what they could become. You know, one of my biggest challenges has been taking this thinking to my, my hometown of Lewis and Auburn. Not just because I grew up there, or I happen to be a big history geek for all things Lewis and Auburn, but because the stories my grandparents told me root me there. For me, it's personal. You know, when I was living out of state, I would find opportunities to drive back to Lewis and Auburn just to make connections to my hometown. And I remember reading in the newspaper once this story about a group forming in Lewis and Auburn along the Androscoggin River to help connect the community to the river and its use as part of community development. Sounded good to me. So on a weeknight, I make the drive north to a meeting at the Bates Mill. Now, as soon as that meeting started, anyone who wasn't already part of the group or anyone with ties to the paper industry was asked to leave. And just as that moment on Penobscot Avenue stuck with me, so did that moment. You know, it wasn't more than a, a few years later that I found myself living back in my old neighborhood. And as I looked around and thought, you know, it's been over a generation since our major mills closed. You know, I, I like to describe the, the trajectory of that, of that egg in Lewis and Auburn as being driven by the culture of low expectations. It's not that people aren't prideful, it's not that they lack aspirations, but they lack the ability to be empowered and supported in believing how great they could become. I had an opportunity, as I was running the land trust, to try to find ways to make connections for people to what they already had. Now, it wasn't Jay and Livermore Falls, there weren't flatbeds in every driveway with ATVs and snowmobiles, but I did see a lot of people with canoes or kayaks. Unfortunately, they took them on the lakes and ponds of the region in western Maine, and rarely out on the Androscoggin River. So, how do we connect people? How do we meet them where they are? Well, typically what I would hear, and anyone who knows the history of the Androscoggin, was, the Androscoggin? Are you sure we can go out there? What if our hands touch the water? Will we have to get shots? Well, the reality was, no, you weren't going to have to get shots. You were going to be okay. Uh, and after a few short years of hosting small events, getting people outdoors, you can show up there on, this, on a summer weeknight and find people out on the river, enjoying paddling around the canals and riverfront, going to the deck at Gritties and having a beer after, or even coming out at the Great Falls Balloon Festival. But you know, just as it was in Jane Livermore Falls, just connecting to our natural beauty, natural assets, that, that just wasn't going to be enough. So what else was at stake? So when I moved back to my neighborhood, you know, I saw the condition of buildings. Heck, I was crazy enough to buy one of those buildings downtown. I saw the unacceptably high rates of poverty. There was way too much evidence, too much evidence of broken eggs. You know, why weren't people investing in my downtown the way they were in other downtowns in Maine? Why was all this time being spent turning our green fields into big box stores and strip malls? You know, in communities the size of Lewiston, Auburn, I've come to realize that some people actually own where the egg is going. And that if we were going to shift the direction of that egg for the benefit of many, it was going to come at a cost for a few. And trust me, I've broken more than my share of eggs. You know, I, I went to a leadership program a few years back, uh, led by Marty Linsky. And Marty is with the Cambridge Leadership Associates. And he was giving a lecture on adaptive leadership and how you follow models of adaptive leadership to create change. 
And there was a phrase that he used, and being an engineer, it works for me, and it was the productive zone of disequilibrium. And what it really boils down to is how much disruption can you create before you're unable to create meaningful long-term change? And I really apply that today to my catching of the egg. You know, how much on your own or with other people can you try to push the direction of that egg before it breaks? And when it breaks, can you revisit what went wrong and be ready to come back and try it again? You know, we haven't fully caught the egg uh, yet in my hometown, and it hasn't been nearly as easy as I thought it would be. There's a real challenge. There's a real challenge to get people to feel inspired enough to want to add their voice to setting a direction. And when they are inspired, when they are adding their voice, how are you empowering them to play their part, to lend a hand to shaping the direction of that egg? You know, when all of you leave here today, you go back to your work, you go back to your volunteer efforts, you go back to your community, you go back to your neighborhood, and you think about that project that you've had, you've been working on so long, and it doesn't work. That proposal you've been spending so much time on with partners, and it just falls flat. Write it off to broken eggs. Laugh about it, and get right back to the drawing board and do it again and find out what could I have done differently? What could I have done by looking forward to understand what direction I need to be on? And what can you do to look back to understand how the momentum that's come before you is setting that course? Because at the end of the day, you're gonna need those many hands to shape that direction. And even when the egg breaks, remember, there's always another egg in the carton. Thank you.